Think outside with us as we present to you why Polaris is a must-hold opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the CFA Society for giving us the opportunity to speak today. My name is Dylan, and I'm joined by my teammates Andrea, Brittany, and Aries, and together we are proud to represent the University of Minnesota Twin Cities as we initiate a hold recommendation on Polaris with a 12-month price target of $97, representing a 5% upside. Our recommendation is backed by our valuation, which is driven by three primary catalysts favorable market overhaul, improved operational efficiencies, and uncertain economic conditions. Polaris has established itself as a leader in the power sports industry, operating in three primary business segments, off-road, on-road, and marine vehicles. Gross margins for each segment have increased steadily since 2020 due to increases in per unit sales prices, hovering around 21%. Geographically, 79% of sales were derived from the United States, opening up opportunities to increase market share in both off-road and on-road segments, where competitors are falling behind. Environmentally, Polaris has highlighted electrification as a key capability for its vehicles, with climate change influencing purchasing decisions for consumers. Increasing electric offerings not only highlights a drive in demand, but also a commitment to making a positive impact on the environment. Socially, Polaris puts customers, employees, and dealers at the forefront of what they do. Through various partnerships and funds, Polaris has held over 100 safety day events, reaching over 41,000 children and young adults, raised $200,000 for scholarships for Native American students, and has $250,000 available for employees facing financial difficulties. In regards to governance, Michael Spiezen and Robert Mack were appointed as CEO and CFO in 2021. Having been with Polaris since 2015 and 2016, we believe that their expertise and familiarity with Polaris operations will accelerate strategic initiatives. Polaris' board diversity of 30% opens up room for improvement, however, it is the average in the industry. Polaris is a leader in the seasonal industry for power sports, where competition is mainly found within one or two of the players, such as Honda and ERP. COVID-19 brought with it an era of easy money and isolation, where consumers found themselves with a lot more discretionary income. However, as the economic landscape has changed, so has consumer demand. We've been seeing a decrease in discretionary spending in categories such as recreational vehicles. This, alongside the erosion of credit lending, has made for a harder environment for Polaris to sell it. With regards to competition, Polaris competes with both Honda and ERP, as well as Harley Davidson in their motorcycle segment. Taking a look at our investment thesis and what leads us to this whole recommendation, we have three main prongs. Firstly, we'd like, like to take a look at the favorable market overhaul. Legacy players in the motorcycle space, such as Harley Davidson, have been seeing a decrease in uh, motorcycle sales, even more so than the market average. While Polaris has seen a decrease in their value offerings, the same cannot be said for its higher ticket items, as well as its more newer offerings. This reaffirms management's uh, claims that perhaps Harley Davidson's heavyweight motorcycles may be falling out of popularity with the current consumers. Our second catalyst entails improved operational efficiencies through the recent Walker Evans acquisition with a limited upside. The Walker Evans brand has been known to build performance products and is a leader in the, pop in the shock absorber industry. It has been a supply of employers since 2000 and provides shock absorbers for the company's off-road vehicles and snowmobiles. We believe that the acquisition will bring supply chain efficiencies through improved through vertical integration, further leading to decreased cost. We project that there will be a 60 basis point decrease in cost as a percentage of sales through our investment horizon. Next, as we take a look at Polaris's gross margins, we see Polaris's gross margins decreasing starting in 2021, mainly due to an increase in cost of goods sold. On the right, on the left, we can see that Polaris's gross margins has decreased below its com competitor's average in the, in, starting in 2021. This has shown that Polaris has had difficulties with managing its costs effectively. While we believe that the Walker Evans acquisition will bring improved margins for Polaris, uh, we believe that Polaris's cost of revenues will still remain elevated compared to its peers, resulting in a limited upside for the firm. Turning to the third catalyst, our workflow recommendation. Let's take a look at some economic data released for last January. Though the anchor employment rate remained flat as they carried down to the third one, 
the Fed is seeking more sustained movement of inflation toward the target 2% before considering interest cuts. Both retail sales and public stock are under expectations, signaling a decline in consumer confidence, which means consumers may be less likely to spend on discretionary items, such as recreational vehicles. So given the present data, we wouldn't expect the interest rate cutting too soon, which means the risk will continue to grapple with the burden of high interest Here's our financial analysis for Polaris. Over the past three years, Polaris seems to have a robust ROE performance. In 2024, we input a modest revenue growth due to its inventory challenges, with an expected rebound in 2025. We also anticipate Polaris will make voluntary debt repayments, and this strategy will, will contribute to a projected decline in the ROE, despite a steady net margin and asset turnover after 2025. Our IC had a drop in 2023, mainly due to its lower low pack margin. And we will anticipate our IC to be flat in the future five years under the same assumptions. For its free cash flow, there was a significant drop in 2021, mainly driven by its massive increase of its inventory level. Also, we can see a downtrend of its coverage issue after 2021, mainly driven by the high interest rate. Also, we anticipate both of these figures will have stronger performance in the upcoming years, under same assumptions. When we compare Polaris's ROIC with its competitor, BRP, we see much lower levels of ROIC in Polaris. As we decompose Polaris's ROIC, it is evident that Polaris's operating margin is the main cause for the lag. To decompose the operating margins further, Polaris shows elevated cost as a percentage of revenue as well as SGNA as a percentage of revenue. First, taking a look at cost as a percentage of revenue, rising material as well as warranty expenses have contributed the most to rising cost of sales in the last three fiscal years. Operational inefficiencies that lead to man decreased manufacturing volumes as well as difficulties in produce producing new products have also led to significant margin pressure. The main key driver that drove S uh, Polaris' SG&A margins down is increased product liability expense. The majority of this expense is related to products before 2018 and were delayed due to a shutdown of court systems during COVID-19. In valuing Polaris, we mainly use the discounted cash flow analysis to derive our 12-month price target of $97 with a discount rate of 9.6% and a marginal tax rate of 21%. We conducted a multi-stage approach to forecast our top line using a short-term sales growth rate of 4% and a terminal growth rate of 2%. We also conducted a sensitivity analysis to test the sensitivity of the short-term sales growth rate, terminal growth rate, cost as a percentage of sales, as well as the discount rate. Both the bear and base cases signify a hold position for Polaris. The implied price calculated from the relative valuation is derived from a composite of six different multiples. Com compared to its peers, Polaris currently trades at a slight premium in both the PE and EV to EBITDA ratios, further solidifying our hold recommendation. With regards to the risk that we take into account in our hold recommendation, we come up with three main ones. Firstly, regulatory risk. This takes a look at tariffs, taxations, and currency exchange rates. Secondly, we take a look at the increased cost as well as the portability that plagues both Polaris and its consumers. And finally, we take a look at climate change and the effects of changing weather conditions. In conclusion, we'd like to reiterate our whole recommendation on Polaris. With favorable market overhaul and improved operational efficiencies offset by uncertain economic conditions, we believe that Polaris will hit our 12-month price target of $97, representing a 5% upside. Thank you again for your time, and we open it up for questions. analysis kind of on the prolonged higher temperatures for Polaris and 
we think that in order for employers to become a sell, um, we would have to see kind of additional, like less sales in the off-road off -road, um, segment because of decreased uh, snowmobile sales. And that would also lead to inventory, higher days, uh, inventory outstanding. And after that, we see it at the bottom, we have increased days inventory outstanding and with the updated valuation of the kind of prolonged higher temperature, we see a valuation of $79, which kind of represents a 14% downside, in which we would start considering Polaris to become a sell. However, as Polaris stands today, we believe that Polaris still continues to kind of capitalize on its market leadership and continues to be able to thrive even in uncertainty. So if you could just clarify a little bit, I mean, a lot of your opinion seems to be very macro, uh, which is fine. But let's just say the, the macro pieces start to fall in place. Um, the micro piece of your story does identify execution risk, but does the macro overpower that, or is there enough execution risk at Polaris that you would be looking at something else uh, with a favorable macro? Macro is not as a tail end.
every space they every industry every sector they own. Um, when we BRP is their um, most comparable competitor. So you guys are offering a old recommendation here. I'm curious what competitors, suppliers, uh, customers. Uh, or other related industry uh, uh, participants would be better opportunities than what you're seeing at Claris. I would like to say that it's more of a blend of its market segment currently. So we've seen that with the Indian motorcycle brand, right, this is really good at gaining a younger demographic um, in terms of their motorcycle sales. Um, However, it has decreased recently uh, from 11% to 13% from Q3 to Q4 um, in terms of market share. Now, Harley Davidson here uh, previously was better in terms of their motorcycle offerings, but we're now seeing um, like smaller, less heavyweight um, motorcycles, so the likes of BRPs, the likes of Hondas, um, as well as, I believe, Yamaha's. So, similar to that. Thank you. 